This is a slightly different video for a change. I thought I would go out. I was out shooting the other day there, but not. We were a walk up the river and I thought I'll take my camera with me and forgot to take put the battery in it. So I was left with my Samsung S20 Plus. which is a really decent camera in it and I mean you can see the, the lenses there with that it's got a really decent camera in it and one of the settings in it that I hadn't tried was the 2B3 64 megabyte setting uh, how it works honestly I don't know I'd have to go and look it up or I'll put the information up here and put you a link to it as well not recommending the phone because all phones are different it's just I'm um, been a Samsung user for years so I'm actually really quite happy with this one and this I'm going to point this out though I find this I'm going to recommend this for anybody that carries a phone that there on the back of it that ring that you can see there that is so handy and that has saved my phone so many times because I can easily shoot in portrait mode flip it around and shoot in landscape mode and it's held free if you don't have one of these, can I recommend that you get them? They're absolutely brilliant. I'm not going to have an affiliate link down below or anything. I just think these are the bee's knees. They're absolutely brilliant. This one, I can't read it without my glasses. So I'll put it up on the screen. Uh, but this is brilliant. Been out in boats. No fear at all of losing my phone. And that's going to be the famous last words though. Uh, but no fear at all of losing my phone and you can shoot as I say your hands are free just for your thumb to fire the camera but anyway let's get back on to subject here what I wanted to do was I wanted to compare a Lightroom edit and a Luminar edit from the file I got from that as I say it was 64 megabyte uh, 2 by 3 aspect ratio the resulting JPEG file was 22.3 megabytes, I think it was. And you've got to remember that the sensor in these it is nowhere near comparable to a full frame camera. It's nowhere because the detail is not there. The dynamic range is just not there because of the pixel density within the camera itself. But saying that, it's a fantastic camera. Uh, it's a fantastic camera for a phone. And... The images you can post on Facebook, you can post on Instagram, you could probably print them up to A3 without too much of loss of quality. I'm not going to try it for this though. I, but I wanted to see how the edits would go. So what I did was I brought them both into one into Luminar and one into Lightroom and I tried to edit similarly. Two softwares, they're not competing with each other, although the title says Luminar versus Lightroom. It was just for me, it was just to see how Luminar handled the file and how Lightroom handled the file. And I used no reference when I was editing both of the images. I just edited them to where I thought they would look or where I thought they were similar. And it was quite a fun process to do. There is a time difference that I did notice because you've got all these different softwares. You've got Luminar, you've got Photoshop, you've got Lightroom. They've all got their own unique things. The closest comparison, and that's why I used Lightroom and Luminar, is the raw handling capabilities, the library system, everything that's there. That's why I use the, the two of them as a comparison instead of going Luminar and Photoshop. Because as you know, Luminar works as a plug-in for Photoshop and Lightroom. So it complements what you can do with each of those softwares. So it was just a fun wee exercise I wanted to try. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the results of this. I'll show you the both edits and I'll show you the results and I'll speak briefly about the results. Okay, here we have the file that we're going to use for this and as you can see it came from a Samsung S20 Plus and it's just a JPEG image, 1600th of a second, F2, focal length 5.9, ISO 25 and as the JPEG file, it's not a raw file for this. I just thought I would go in straight away and do this just to let you see how the two of them handle it. Right, I'm going to show you something as well, first of all, with the file. And this is at the Samsung S20 Plus at its maximum setting, 2 by 3 and 64 megabytes. What you've got to remember with these and mobile phones is the sensor size uh, for this. The detail 
can be a little fuzzy. It's great for Instagram, it's great for everything else, but just for this, it lets you see how it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and edit both of these similarly I, and just see how they turn out at the end. So I'll just go into the develop module. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop both of them at 8 by 10 And that's just to take care of this. I'm not going to worry about blending out. I'm not going to worry about rule of thirds, anything like that. I'm just going to drop them in and do that with them. So that's it started straight away. So we'll now get in and we'll start editing the fine details. So I'm going to pull the highlights back slightly. I'm also going to pull the shadows back just a tiny bit. And the whites. Blacks I'm going to push just to see if we can bring a tiny bit of detail in here. I'm going to add some texture. Because it was quite a flat sky when we were doing this. And then I'm going to add some clarity to this and also I'm going to dehaze this one so that we bring through some of the sky and for me as per usual I'm going to drop down and I'm going to get into the saturation of the blue and I'm going to pull that back so this bright sunny day that you see when it finishes won't be just as bright and sunny and I'm also going to pull back some of the luminance here I don't want it to go grey but I want to pull back the powerfulness of the blue. I'll pull this go back into the saturation, pull it back. Just about there, I would say. Next thing, the greens for me, I'm going to drop the greens. So I'm going to pull the saturation back in them. Luminance as well. You'd think I was quite miserable when I pulled back all the bright colours, but it's just the effect I like in my images. So I'm going to bring that back to about there. I'm not going to do too much sharpening, but because there is AI sharpening in Luna, I'm going to add a tiny bit. So I'm going to move this around to about there. And I'm going to push the sharpening. And I'm holding down the Alt key to do this. I don't want to overdo it, but I know it's going to. It's got to remember that it is a size issue. It's with the uh, sensor size. And we'll turn down the noise reduction slightly. Again, holding down Alt. Zoom back in. And that there, I'm actually quite happy with that. That's actually quite a decent image. I don't know if you noticed, but in here, although it's a small sensor, it still wants to pick, pick up the flies that were flying around. Uh, quite close to this when they took this, so I'll just leave them for now. Next thing I am going to do is I am going to put a gradient. I was going to put a vignette on it there, but I'll put a gradient in instead. So bring that down and I'll reset these. And I'll take shadows down and I'll just pull the exposure back. So I'll try and emulate what I'm doing here in Luminar. And we'll just bring that to a bit there. And I don't really want it to affect in here too much. So I am going to go in with the brush. And I'm going to get into a raise. And feather and flows at 100. Just paint in around there just a tiny bit. So we've got that. As I say, I'm not going to get into too much detail and range mask and everything. I'm not going to get bothered with that just for this exercise. So let's turn that back off. Right. I'll keep it at that. So I'm quite happy with that. That's just a nice effect that that's given. Detail and everything there will still be washed slightly. And I can zoom in a wee bit just to see. It's still got that effect. But you can make out everything that's in it. Take it back to main screen. So that's it for Lightroom. Okay, so that's us now in Luminar with the exact same image. So the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to crop this. And the crop ratio, again, is 4 by 5 There we go. So that's it, roughly where it was before. Actually, it wasn't. It was around there. So we'll take it to that. And we'll click done. Because of the different tools in Luminar and because of the different way Lightroom works, the two programs are separate, although they can be integrated and used together. So let's just get through this for an edit to see how it goes. Right, the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to get into AI Enhance 
and I'm going to enhance the sky and I'm going to bring out some of the blues and leave it like that. Then I'm going to get into AI Accent and I'm going to bring that up just to around there, just to a comfortable amount. Next thing I am going to push the structure, not too much for this image. And as I say, I'm going to try and keep to the same style of edit for this image as I did with the Lightroom, but they are two different softwares, so things might be slightly different as well. I'm going to pull the highlights back and I am going to just push the shadows a tiny bit there. Right, next thing for me is the colour. I'm going to pull the saturation out. Then I am going to go in and deal with my blues. So I'm going to pull the saturation down in the blues. Then I'm going to pull the luminance back in the blue. So I'm kind of guessing where it was with the other image. But already I can see more detail in the sky, but let's just go with this. The next thing I'm going to get in, and I'm going to deal with the yellows first. I'm going to pull the saturation out in them, and then I'm going to pull the luminance back. I'm then going to get into the greens, pull them back, saturation-wise, and then pull the luminance back. Right, already I can tell that that green is different from the original one, and I'd have to bring up another image just to see. But we'll go with what we've got just now. I'm going to get into the details enhancer and I'm just going to enhance the small details just slightly. Last thing would be for me would be the adjustable gradient and I said I would bring one of them in. So I'm going to bring it into what I think was the same as before. So we'll see if we can do this. I, and then I'm going to set the orientation. I'm going to drag the orientation to there. Bring it into around there because I remember it raising through that. Take it down and I'm going to take it down just ever so slightly. And again, that helps with the detail. Right, I think that is sitting roughly where the other one is. Right, here we have the two of them together. So you can see that I have edited slightly differently depending on what one I'm working with. You can see the blues are more vibrant here, the greens are more vibrant. I just haven't pulled them back. Out of the two, what do I prefer? I actually prefer this. I prefer the faded and desaturated colours more than anything else. Uh, but that, that's just a personal choice. This, I think, looks really nice, though. Uh, if I was to hang any in the wall, I'm unsure what one I would go for. Probably if you wanted it to be nice and bright and... The house, I'd go for the Lightroom Classic edit, but it just lets you see how both of them have handled a 22 megabyte file a JPEG from the Samsung S20 Plus. Go in and check in at the tree, and see, there's the tree. I keep going for this lighter one just to see how it handles it. You can still see the hailing, that's there as well. Zoom back out for this, and um, we'll take it back in here as well. And the hailing still there. Maybe not just as much, but the hailing is still there. But when you think about it, this is taken on a mobile phone. And for this to go onto Instagram or Facebook, this, this is just perfect. I just wanted to see how Lightroom Classic would handle the same image as a woman are. And I've done, both of them have done really, really well. Hopefully you can see with that. It was an interesting experiment for myself. Uh, but hopefully you can see with that just the differences in it. Not too much of a difference. If anything, the biggest difference was the colour. And that was down to me editing it. That was not down to the software because we're both edited in the same colour modes. But that was down to me. So you saw on the... Right hand side the Lightroom edit and the left hand side the Luminar edit. You still saw the hailing around the trees, both of them pick that up, but again that's down to the sensor as well on the phone. That's nothing down to the software. So as I say, whatever you're using it for, whether it's uh, for small prints or... I see you've got the mobile phone competitions now. Uh, because it is a big part of photography now, everybody or nearly everybody has a mobile phone. As I say, we went up the river and I was just going to carry my camera, uh, not taking my tripod or anything with my Irix lens on it, to shoot that tree and to actually to shoot some ferns. 
as well. So charged up the batteries, charged up the battery for the Sony and charged up the battery for the Nikon as well. Put the battery in the Sony, didn't put the battery in the Nikon. So I took my camera with me, got up the river, luckily I checked it as I got out of the car and so that just went straight into my backpack and for the next hour or so when we were walking up the river I just took photos on the phone and that image you see is a resulting photo from the phone. Hopefully that just lets you see slightly misleading title Luminar versus Lightroom but it is as well, it was Luminar versus Lightroom editing. A 22.3 megabyte JPEG shot in the Samsung S20 Plus. So it just lets you see how the two softwares handled a photo from the Samsung. Hopefully it was interesting to watch just the editing and the final results. And, but it was a nice wee interesting exercise for me to do. Hopefully you enjoyed that slightly different video this time and if you'd like to check out more videos on the channel please check them out below. If you're currently not a subscriber please consider subscribing because that would be greatly appreciated. Remember stay safe, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ending 3 to get comfy. And if you think you've got a problem understanding now and again what I say, you should hear me talking at my proper speed. <laughs> because if it's to talk at my proper speed, you probably don't even see my lips moving in. But the fact that you get into the slang, maybe make it seem a wee bit even more awkward. Right, okay. If you're editing on... If you're editing on your... I'm going to turn around now because this isn't working. <laughs> If you're editing on your phone, there's lots of that. I've even forgot what I was going to say now. I'm going to shift that phone back in case it's in the camera. Three, two, one. I think I maybe start this right from the beginning. Three, I'm going to stop it.